Join the Thinking in English Conversation Club right now and get a seven day free trial. That's right, one week free to see if you enjoy our Conversation Club. The only way to improve your English speaking ability is by speaking and speaking as often as possible. And the best way to do this is with my Conversation Clubs. Join small groups of other Thinking in English listeners, along with me and professional English tutors, to discuss fascinating topics, learn vocabulary, and really improve your English. All of our clubs are conducted online and are an amazing space to practice, test yourself, and meet interesting people. We run clubs six times a week, and the more of you who join, the more sessions we will run in the future. You can join the Conversation Club right now for just $10 a month. And if you sign up today, you can get a seven day free trial. Click the link in the description or go to www.patreon.com forward slash thinking in English to join now. Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. Over the weekend, the leader of the Wagner Group of Mercenaries started a mutiny in Russia. What happened? What is the Wagner Group? Who is Yevgeny Prigozhin? Why was there a conflict? And what does this mean for Vladimir Putin, the Ukraine war and the future of the Wagner Group itself? Let's discuss all of this today. You can find the full transcripts for today's episode for free over on the Thinking in English blog. The link is in the description. Here is today's vocabulary list. Mercenary, mercenary. A soldier who fights for any country or group that pays them. For example, mercenaries have been working for groups across Africa. Mutiny, mutiny. An occasion when a group of people, especially soldiers or sailors, refuses to obey orders and or attempts to take control from people in authority. For instance, there were rumours of mutiny among the troops. Insurrection. Insurrection. An organised attempt by a group of people to defeat their government and take control of their country, usually by violence. For example, Hundreds of people have been arrested for taking part in the attempted US insurrection a few years ago. Occupied. Occupied. An occupied place is being controlled by an army or group of people that has moved into it. For example, the occupied territories will be returned once a peace treaty is signed. To reclaim. To reclaim. To take back something that was yours. As in, the army is attempting to reclaim the city. Plausible deniability. Plausible deniability. The ability of someone to deny any knowledge or involvement in a particular action or event, especially in a way that seems believable or credible. For example, the government officials maintained plausible deniability regarding the controversial operation, stating that they had no knowledge of it and were not involved in its planning or execution. Incompetence. Incompetence. The lack of ability to do something successfully or as it should be done. For instance, they have repeatedly criticised the incompetence of the government. To operate. To operate. To do business in or from a particular place. For example, we have representatives operating in most countries. Russia has been in the news constantly since invading Ukraine over a year ago. The brutality of war, destruction of entire cities and large number of casualties have been clearly displayed for all of us to see. Alongside the Russian military, a large private army of mercenaries has joined in Russia's attempts to take control of Ukraine, 
operating in annex regions and at the centre of battles. This group of mercenaries, known as the Wagner Group, has been infamous for years. They have been at the centre of conflicts in places like Syria, Sudan and across the world. But over the past few days, this Wagner Group and their leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin, have been at the centre of a new conflict. A conflict with Russia and the Russian military. The 24th of June will go down as one of the most eventful and unusual days in modern Russian history. It started with the powerful leader of a mercenary group starting a mutiny or insurrection in the country, crossing from the battlefields of Ukraine to Russian soil and then starting a march from the south of the country to the capital Moscow. The mercenaries had been most active in the occupied regions of eastern Ukraine, but they moved across the border to the large city Rostov-on-Don. This is significant, not just because the city is large, but because it is where Russia's war in Ukraine is being coordinated. The Wagner Group quickly claimed control of the military headquarters and the wider city. The group then began to move up the main motorway to Moscow, stopping at a few other major cities, and reports suggested that they were moving weapons through the country as well. Russian President Putin appeared on TV, accusing his former friend and ally Yevgeny Prigozhin of treason and betrayal. Cities and regions were put in emergency conditions, with the mayor of Moscow telling people to stay indoors and the leaders of some other regions closing roads. Prigozhin boasted that he had 25,000 men ready to take to the streets, and it is well known that compared to the Russian military, the Wagner Group is incredibly loyal, well-trained and motivated. It seemed as if Russia was heading for a violent conflict between the Wagner Group and Russian forces. Could it be a coup attempt against Putin? Would the country fall into civil war? Would people support the Wagner Group's attempt? Then, as quickly as it began, the mutiny was over. The March for Justice, as the Wagner Group were calling their actions, was called off by Saturday evening, and the troops returned to their bases. A deal had been made by the leader of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, Prigozhin was headed to Belarus and will not be prosecuted for any crimes in Russia. His troops will be forgiven and his role in the Ukraine war is probably over. What has been happening in the past few days? Well, let's take a deeper look at the Wagner Group and its leader and discuss why the relationship between the mercenaries and Russia broke down. And then think about the consequences for Russia Vladimir Putin, Ukraine and the Wagner Group itself. So who is Yevgeny Prigozhin? The central figure of the recent events is Yevgeny Prigozhin, the leader of the infamous Wagner Group. But before becoming the leader of an international mercenary organisation, Prigozhin was known as Putin's chef, because that is exactly what he was, a restaurant owner and chef. After serving nearly 10 years in jail for theft and robbery, he started selling hot dogs on the streets of St. Petersburg. In the early 1990s, the Soviet Union collapsed and the country was now open to business, capitalism and expansion. The success of his hot dog business enabled Prigozhin to open more expensive restaurants in the city. And these restaurants quickly attracted some of Russia's elite and powerful leaders. One of these leaders was Vladimir Putin, who would regularly take foreign visitors to Prigozhin's restaurants in the early 2000s, and even celebrated his birthdays there. Prigozhin also founded a catering business, which won contracts to supply the food to the military, public schools, and even the Kremlin, the centre of Russian government, hence the nickname Putin's chef. Prigozhin was not just a restaurant owner, however. He also ran some very, very different businesses. 
In 2014, Russia took over parts of Ukraine. A mysterious group of mercenaries appeared in the country, fighting alongside pro-Russian separatists and forces. This was the Wagner Group, or officially PMC Wagner. This group is led by Putin's chef. The group is a secretive and private mercenary group. Back in 2014, it was made up of mainly former Russian elite soldiers, especially former members of the special forces. The group operated in some of the most serious and dangerous conflicts in the world, and wherever they operated, they were surrounded by accusations of human rights abuses and illegal actions. The Wagner Group has been found in Syria and Libya, and recently in Mali, where the government is paying for the Wagner Group to replace the role of the French military, and also in the Central African Republic. In all of these locations, they have been accused of torture, assaults, killings, and have taken control of oil in the Middle East and diamond mines in Africa. In many situations, Russia has used the Wagner Group as a form of plausible deniability. They are a private military organization operating overseas and had no official relationship with the Russian government. This means they could do things for the Russian government in regions they operate while Russia was able to deny its involvement. For example, acting in conflicts in Sudan and Syria to support Russia's interests and helping to annex Crimea without the Russian military being involved. Wagner's first action was working with Russia to annex Crimea from the Ukraine in 2014. And in the current Ukrainian conflict, Wagner has been at the center. They are widely suspected to have been present in Ukraine in the months before the invasion began, carrying out false flag attacks to help Russia justify the invasion. It was also reported that a group of Wagner mercenaries had traveled to Kiev in the past to try and assassinate the Ukrainian president. And in the actual conflict, the Wagner group was involved in the capture of the Ukrainian city Bakhmut. Reports suggest that Wagner sent hundreds of soldiers into dangerous situations and lost many soldiers in the fight. The group has also grown massively and now controls around 50,000 mercenaries in Ukraine. Despite mercenary groups being technically illegal in Russia, Wagner has openly recruited thousands of men, the vast majority being taken from Russia's prison system. They have also been taking people from other countries, like Serbia, and the distant regions of Russia. Although the group was initially not mentioned by the Russian government in public, the key role they are playing in the Ukrainian invasion has increased their level of recognition and made the name famous. So, considering all of this information, why did a former friend of Putin, alongside his army of soldiers fighting with Putin's armies, mount a mutiny over the weekend. As the conflict in Ukraine has gone on, the relationship between Prigozhin and senior figures in Russia's military has deteriorated. First, Russia's invasion of Ukraine has not gone to plan. What was supposed to be a quick move to invade, take control of the country, annex territory and change the government, has become a long and bloody conflict. Ukraine has fought back and Russia's military incompetence has been clear for the world to see. Prigozhin has repeatedly criticised the defence minister and head of the army for, for this incompetence, including the quality of Russian troops, the poor planning and strategies, and accusations that Russia is not supplying the mercenaries properly. Second, Russia angered Prigozhin by taking or trying to take more control over mercenary groups operating in Ukraine. The defense ministry has tried to merge groups like Wagner with the normal army. This tension has undermined relations between Russia and the Wagner group over recent weeks and months. Questions have also been raised about money and finances, with the Wagner group offices being raided by Russian police. Importantly, 
Prigozhin is not against the war in Ukraine. The opposite is true. He believes part of Russia's incompetence is that they have not been brutal enough. He wanted Russia to fight better. The current Russian approach has been to sacrifice hundreds of soldiers in poorly thought out plans. Prigozhin believes Russia could be doing a lot better. Then, on June 23rd, Prigozhin publicly accused the Russian military of bombing Wagner mercenaries in Ukraine and killing a large number of his men. The next day, his troops crossed the border and promised to remove the military leadership from their positions of power. Although the mutiny ended almost, and almost as quickly as it began, there could be significant and lasting consequences for Putin, for Ukraine, and for the Wagner group itself. For Vladimir Putin, the events of the past few days have made him appear weaker than any other time in his leadership of the country. And for the first time, it seems really possible that the decision to invade Ukraine will eventually lead to the end of Putin's reign. If the invasion of Ukraine had been successful and according to Russia's plans, Putin would have secured himself as a hero. But the invasion has not gone to plan. It is clear that the information provided to Putin by his advisers was wrong and incorrect. And now this conflict has resulted in a mutiny against his military command. Russian cities went into lockdown, military vehicles were on the streets of Moscow in preparation to defend the city, and they even began digging defensive ditches. This does not put Putin in a strong position. However, this mutiny could actually be a way for Putin to end the conflict in a slightly less embarrassing way. Putin cannot lose in the Ukraine war, because defeat would be incredibly embarrassing. And the way things are going, Russia is probably not going to win, or win at all, in this conflict. The Wagner Group actions could have given Putin the perfect excuse. Russia can now blame the mercenaries for ruining their efforts. Rather than Russia failing, the Wagner Group was the problem. And this could potentially save Putin. For Ukraine, there are now lots of possibilities. The Wagner Group, despite being a private army made up of convicts and recruits from a variety of places, has been far more competent, strong and committed than Russia's own army. And now the future of this group is unknown. While we can't discount the Russian military completely, Ukraine's chances at a successful counter-offensive must be much higher today. Wagner held important positions in Luhansk, Donetsk and Bakhmut and other occupied cities. If they are gone, who is going to organise the defence of these areas? And if the Russian military doesn't take the place of Wagner troops and match their commitment and ability, then Ukraine could reclaim a lot of land. And for the Wagner group, the future is definitely unknown. Prigozhin has left for Belarus with the promise of no criminal charges. But will the group continue? Will all of its troops become parts of the Russian military? What will happen to the forces in Africa and the Middle East? And what role will Prigozhin have in the future of the Wagner group? Moreover, what were the details of the agreement to end the mutiny? Could Prigozhin have actually achieved his goal at getting the heads of the military and defence department replaced. We'll have to wait and see. So here is today's final thought. The recent mutiny by the Wagner group of mercenaries, led by Yevgeny Prigozhin, has shocked the world. The conflict between the group and the Russian military has exposed tensions and disagreements within Russia's efforts to control Ukraine. Despite the swift resolution of the mutiny, the event has weakened Vladimir Putin's leadership and raised doubts about the success of Russia's invasion. The future of the Wagner group remains uncertain with questions about their role in ongoing conflicts and the potential integration of their forces into the Russian military.
For Ukraine, the absence of the Wagner Group could present an opportunity to regain control over occupied territories. Ultimately, the consequences of this mutiny will unfold in the coming days and weeks, shaping the future dynamics of the region. But what do you think? What do you think about the news story of the mutiny and insurrection? Let me know by leaving a comment on Spotify. You can leave a comment on the Thinking in English blog on the transcript for this episode, or you can message me on Instagram. My Instagram is Thinking in English podcast, and I regularly post reels and extra content over there. Um, also, I have a Twitter account. I have a YouTube account. Please go and subscribe to YouTube and watch a few um, or listen to a few of the podcasts on YouTube. And yeah, thank you all so much for your support recently. It's been really amazing. If you'd like to support me more, you can do by becoming a Patreon subscriber. You'll get to join our conversation clubs. You'll get uh, lots and lots of great benefits, uh, including one-on-one -on -one classes with myself, group English classes, conversation groups. And we have some cool plans coming up in the next few weeks of introducing some new uh, and interesting sessions for all of you guys to join. And there's a seven day free trial if you click the link in the description. So thank you all so much for listening today and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.